filmed a few videos on my channel about what a photo pass is and how to get one, but today I wanted to talk about what you should and shouldn't do once you get your first photo pass. More specifically, photo pit etiquette for concert photographers. In this video, I'll be breaking down do's and don'ts for photographing your favorite artist from the pit at a concert or music festival. The first thing to keep in mind is the no flash rule. This is pretty standard across the music industry and is usually quoted as part of the first three no flash rule that most artists have. There are a few exceptions to the no flash rule, the first of which is if you're working directly for the artist and they've okayed it. Or sometimes in clubs and smaller venues if you're shooting an EDM artist, it can be okay to use a flash because it's usually pretty dark in there. Usually I'll check to see what the in-house photographer is doing, so this is usually the person who's shooting directly for the venue, and if they're using flash then I'm probably good to go. But a good rule of thumb as a concert photographer is that if you're not sure it's always better to double check, so you can also check with someone on the artist team if you're not sure. I mostly shoot EDM shows and festivals though, and EDM tends to be a bit less strict on the no flash rule in my experience, so I would definitely stick to no flash as a general rule unless you're told otherwise. The main reason for the no flash rule, as far as I can tell, is basically just to not distract or blind the artist because obviously when the flash is going off, it's super bright, they're not going to be able to see for a few seconds, and it may also distract them or throw them off if they're not expecting it. The next thing to keep in mind is to wear all black. This rule is also pretty standard, but you basically want to make sure that you're either wearing all black or as close to it as possible, and I've seen this called either stage blacks or show blacks as well. The purpose of stage blacks is basically just to make sure that you're less visible to the artist and the audience. Usually as a photographer, the less noticeable you are, the better, so wearing all black just kind of helps with this. For me, this means that I basically end up wearing the same three or five outfits to most of the concerts and shows that I'm shooting. And I actually bought like five or six of the same basic black cotton men's tee, and then I usually just wear that with my Carhartts and hookahs at music festivals. It makes it super easy to pack, you don't really have to think too much about putting an outfit together in the morning, which is great because I'm usually sleep deprived or jet lagged. This one should pretty much go without saying, but always be courteous to other photographers and anyone else that you meet in the pit or at concerts and festivals in general. The photo community and music industry in general are both pretty small and tight-knit, so everyone really does know everyone. Because of this, I think it's super important to build a good reputation as someone who's polite, easy to work with, easy to talk with, and I think it makes you more likely to get booked for gigs down the road as well if you're someone that everyone generally has a positive impression of. Usually everyone gets to the pit a few minutes before the artist goes on, so it's also nice to just say hi to everyone in the pit, whether it's someone that you're meeting for the first time, or as you start shooting more shows and festivals, usually you'll start to run into the same people over and over again. And this is especially true for music festivals. Usually the same photographers will be shooting a bunch of different festivals. I went to a few different festivals put on by Insomniac this summer, and it was really cool because by the end of the year I started recognizing a lot of familiar faces, and it was also fun because we got to see each other like every couple weeks or every month. A lot of the gigs that I've booked have actually been through referrals from other photographers who were double booked or otherwise couldn't make the gig. So in that sense, I think it's also really good to kind of network with other photographers. So overall, I think it's really important just to be courteous with everyone to make sure that you're kind of building up a good reputation. And down the line, it's definitely something that can hopefully get you referred for paid gigs as well. Another good rule of thumb when you're shooting in the pit is to always keep moving. When I'm shooting first three in the pit, I like to always keep moving and to try not to stay in the same spot for too long. This is especially true if you have a spot right near the front where the artist is, try to get your shot and move away because everyone probably wants a shot, so it's good to, once you have your shot, let someone else get the chance as well. I really like that most photographers will kind of do this as well, where usually they'll get a shot and then they'll move away so that someone else can get the shot. Especially at music festivals, I notice that this is something that other photographers are usually pretty conscious of. I'm 5'6", so I feel like I'm an average height, but I have short arms, so sometimes I struggle to get the shot that I want if someone's in front of me, or maybe I can't really reach over their shoulder. So what I've noticed is maybe I'll be in one spot for like the first song or the first two songs, and then the photographer in front of me usually will get their shot and then they'll move away, and then I get the chance to kind of move up, get my shot as well, and then I'll move away so someone else can take that spot. And I think it's really good because it helps you get a variety of shots, and it also makes sure that maybe if you got to the pit late or you didn't get the best spot starting out, you also get a chance to kind of get up close to the artist. The only exception to this is sometimes at bigger festivals, or if the pit is smaller and super crowded, there isn't always room to move around in your spot, so in that case just still be courteous. If someone else taps your shoulder or wants to shoot from where you are, I think it's always nice to make room for them if possible. Similar to my last point, when you're shooting in the pit, I think it's always the polite thing to do to make sure that you're not blocking another photographer or blocking their shot. If you're going to use a monopod or a stool or anything that's kind of tall and will obstruct someone else's shot, I think it's always the courteous thing to do to move to the back of the pit to make sure that you're not blocking their shot. Same thing with overhead shots where you're kind of just holding the camera up above your head, or 360 cameras, anything that basically can get in the way. At the end of the day, everyone wants to get the best shot that they can, so you really want to make sure that you're not inconveniencing other photographers or otherwise obstructing them from doing so. At one of the music festivals that I shot this summer, not to like name names or festivals or anything, someone had their monopod up almost the entire time, and of course they were dead center right in front of where the artist was, so it basically just made it impossible for any other photographers to really get good shots during that set. 
And no one really said anything, and I feel like I'm just not super confrontational in person, but you definitely don't want to be that person. When you're shooting from a pit, you should also be doing your best to pay attention to your surroundings. If you need to pass by another photographer or security, what I usually do is I like to tap them on the shoulder, especially if you're shooting through a camera's viewfinder, and I'm definitely guilty of this as well. You're not always paying close attention to what's going on around you, so I think it's just always good to give someone a heads up that you're passing by. Another note is that when I'm moving around the pit and I see that another photographer is shooting, usually what I'll do is I'll try to duck under their lens to make sure that I'm not getting in their shot. This is probably one of my biggest pet peeves when I'm shooting video is when someone makes eye contact with me, they know that I'm filming and then they just walk straight in front of my lens and I'm kind of like, okay, like, especially because I'm shooting raw clips, it's something where it's like, your whole clip just kind of doesn't work. So definitely something to keep in mind, just like if someone's shooting, whether it's photo or video, do your best to just kind of go under them and make sure that you're not getting in their shot. When you're shooting in the pit, you should also be mindful of your gear. So what this means is throwing your gear and anything else that you're not using at that moment out of the way if possible. This is important because photo pits are usually pretty small and they're already difficult to navigate or walk around in. For me, I usually try not to wear my backpack in the pit if possible since it gets in the way when I'm shooting. The only time I'll do this is if I need to change lenses and I don't have my photo belt on me or if I'm the only one in the pit, for example, if I'm shooting for an artist and I'm the only person doing media, then usually there's enough room to move around and I'm not getting in anyone's way. Usually I'll put my backpack and any gear that I'm using up near the stage or against the barricade. I prefer the stage because a lot of the times the people who are up near the barricade have been there for hours and so usually they'll put their drinks or food or backpack, anything like that, up against the barricade. This is also where having a photo belt or a camera clip can come in handy. I bought the Think Tank photo belt system over the summer, which was super great for the music festivals I shot because it let me store and more easily access the lenses that I wasn't using. I also bought a capture clip from Peak Design during their Black Friday sale, so I'm super excited to test that out as well. I think that it'll be super nice because basically you can clip it onto the strap of your camera or to like your photo belt as well. I also bought a hip belt for my Peak Design backpack and the guy in store showed me how to attach my camera clip to the hip belt as I think it'll just make it a lot easier for me to access my camera. And the last tip that I have for shooting in the pit is to always listen to security. At the end of the day, everyone's just trying to do their job and security is trying to do their job as well. Basically just making sure that anyone who hasn't been approved doesn't have access to the pit or to the artist. So when they're not sure if someone should have access or to be able to bring in their gear, they usually like to err on the side of caution. Usually security for concerts are in-house, which means that they work directly for the venue. But security for music festivals is usually outsourced, but it means that they usually don't have any more information than you do. And this is why when you're trying to access the pit or any backstage area, security will usually look at a poster which basically just breaks down what the different types of credentials are and whether or not they can have access to that restricted area. For example, at Outside Lands, you needed a pit wristband to access the pit, so security would look at that before letting you in. Because festival security is usually outsourced to contractors, this can result in a lot of miscommunication about the photo policy or where photographers are allowed, especially on the first day of a big festival. So that's it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. In general, as long as you're mindful of the photo policy and of other photographers, you shouldn't really run into any issues when you're shooting in the pit. In my experience, other photographers have usually been super willing to help as well if I've had any questions or if I've been unsure about something, so it definitely doesn't hurt to ask if you have any questions. And as always, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below or if there are any other videos that you'd like to see me film.